Now, a few episodes back, I gave my take on the most ridiculous things that all EUC riders do. Well, in this episode, I'm going to help to give you the most important set of skills that any EUC rider is ever going to need. No, I'm not talking about how to get your knee down like a motorbiker at the Isle of Man TT or how to ride down a flight of concrete steps without dislodging your dentures. <laughs> no, I'm going to address the most commonly said things by passers-by or interested onlookers and most importantly, how to respond. And I suppose if you ride an EUC as well, I'm guessing that People are saying the exact same things to you and boring you to a point of senseless rigidity too. And hopefully, therefore, this video will breathe life back into those conversations. Next time somebody points at you and says one of these very predictable things. So consider this to be like CPR and I'm a paramedic coming to save your life. You're welcome. Number one. Now this is said so often that I think I blank it out now. I'm tempted to shout something back sometimes like, well, what do you think it looks like? You moron. But here instead is the answer I give nine times out of 10. If somebody says to me, what's that? I say, oh, this, it's the future. Then I simply ride off and I leave them to work it out for themselves. But if you get asked that question while you're pushing it by the trolley handle, my favourite uh, replies include, oh, it's just a tool for measuring my step count and distance. Uh, if it's plugged in, with the cable coming from it, I will sometimes say, oh, this, it's the spare battery for the iPhone. Hello! Yep, I'm in a bookshop. Yeah, just let me look some books, yeah. Let's move on to the second most commonly said thing. Okay, next up, and people usually shout this one, and they say, that's cheating! At which point, I, I want to get off and challenge them to give it a go, and then see if they think it's cheating then. Now, compared to electric scooters, and more of those in a moment, riding an EUC does take a bit of learning, during which time you do, you do build up a sweat and a staggering amount of bruises, and a skill set that would make P.T. Barnum sit up and pay attention. <laughs> But because we make it look so effortless, it does look like cheating. And even more so when you cruise past some lycra-clad weekend Chris Hoy wannabe who's huffing and puffing up a steep hill. At that point, all you can do is nod, grin and shout back, I bet you wish you'd thought about it. OK, let's move on to number three. Well, the answer to that question might vary depending on who's asking it, because if it's a local police officer asking it, then just smile, nod, say, yep, and carry on your way. Now, I have had some very interesting conversations with police officers who have shown a genuine fascination in the unicycle, but never once really challenged me on its legality or shown any concern about the way I was riding it or the safety of it. But there are inconsistencies at play because I'm aware of people who have been stopped by the police, been given on the spot fines of hundreds of pounds, even taken to court and had points put on their licence. So there are inconsistencies here and that must be addressed. The law in the UK must change to adapt and take into consideration personalised electric vehicles. And that's driven, I guess, mostly by the rising popularity of the electric scooter. So I'm going to pause for a second and just take a look at electric scooters. Now they're being used here in Milton Keynes. So, Jonathan, over to you. There is a new form of littering taking place in Milton Keynes this year. And no, I'm not talking about face masks. And they are everywhere. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be seeing pictures of giant turtles wearing face masks awesome. in Greta Thunberg smashing her fists justifiably into the ground as a result but in Milton Keynes there's a different kind of littering taking place these are electric scooters but these things are everywhere so you can hire them it costs about 50 pence for 10 minutes to ride and then you just seem to abandon them where you get off them to where your money runs out just leave it at the side of the street 
How mad is this? So the scheme as it is in Milton Keynes is pretty good. The scooters are available all over the city and they do come with some warnings written on them. They do say on the labels wear a helmet, ride on the road or use a cycle lane, give way to pedestrians etc. Do not drink and ride, do not ride on the pavement. I've never seen anybody uh, on these using helmets. So it'll be interesting to see how this does pan out because this will have an impact on the legality of scooters in public places and if it's legal for scooters then why wouldn't it be legal for electric unicycles thank you Jonathan that really was a fascinating look at the rise in popularity and use of electric scooters here in Milton King is now it's clear therefore the law is going to have to change we can't just put our fingers in our ears and pretend that electric vehicles like unicycles and scooters are going to go away. They're not, so the law has to change. But for now, if I'm asked about if they're legal or not, I have to go back and say, well, what do you think? Should they be legal? Does it look safe? Is there a place for this kind of stuff in modern society? And if anybody's got an objection, then usually there's a good counter-argument to that. You know, think about how when bicycles were first invented and how people objected to those, how people walked in front of cars waving flags when they were first invented, those kind of things. This is an evolution in personalised transport and, you know, the law is going to have to catch up with progress. That's it for now on this one. More later. Let's move on to the next question. Now, I get this one quite a lot, uh, usually from younger people. And the first time I heard it, I realised just how out of touch I am with popular culture because I was a little bit offended. But here in the UK, at least, I hear this one shouted on a daily basis. Now, as I've pointed out previously, most of the people watching my videos are elderly and frail, just like me. We're all middle-aged, we've got well-earned beer bellies, we've got mortgages, and all of our money is invested in debt. So let me help you out here. Now, in this context, sick equals good, not bad. Now, of course, when I was a teenager, bad meant good. But I think I've worked out why young people think saying sick is cool. I think it's because that when you're young, you just don't feel that crippling, life-altering punishment of a hangover in the same way as you do when you tip over the age of 40. When you're in your late teens, your early 20s, you can drink all night, you can dance into the small hours, have a cheeky puke into a toilet and then spring out of bed the next morning as if nothing's happened. Now we, yes we, we've got a whole different experience after a night out where sick is when you're so ill that you actually take comfort from that feeling of the cold porcelain of the toilet bowl pressed against your face in those gaps between between dry retching. I'm just going to leave that image there just to linger for a moment, just to dwell on that before I move on. So when some youth tells you that you are sick, just nod. Maybe salute, but no reply is necessary. necessary. If you feel compelled to say something they just say thanks do not and I repeat do not attempt to engage in any street talk with a young person any notion they have that you are cool or sick will evaporate like a fart in a hurricane and all your good work will be undone let's move on So number five, how does it work? Now, some people even ask, is it electric? I mean, of course it's electric. What do I think it's steam powered? Uh, do I think I'm pedaling it so fast I just can't see? I mean, now the truth is, I don't really know how it works. I'm not, I've always assumed it's magic, but you can't say that because you come across as weird. So I do go into a long, boring speech about how it uh, balances on a central plane using gyroscopic technology. You control it by shifting your weight. And no, no, it doesn't fully balance itself. But that's just so boring. It's far easier to give a little demonstration to show them how to start and stop forwards and backwards. And I find that people are generally fascinated. So uh, here's the tip. If somebody says, how does it work? Or people show an interest, then always, always tell them to check out my YouTube channel.
Well, that's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please give me a thumbs up, a like, and a subscribe. Hit the old bell to get notifications from me. And if you haven't enjoyed it, then that is sick. Uh, give me a thumbs down, and but please let me know why you didn't like it, because I do want to make these videos better and better each time I make them. And also, let me know in the comments below what kind of questions you get asked repeatedly and how you answer them too. So until next time on Wheel Life, please ride carefully. Thanks a lot. Bye.